Hello there guys, I'm P792 here. So, uh, I got a message from someone asking me if I would be doing a vlog about the latest Doctor Who episode, which has a title I can't remember. I'll put it in the uh, description of the video, or the, or the title of the video actually. But yeah, latest episode that was on um, on the Saturday the 28th? Yeah, Saturday the 28th of November. Um, so, short, spoiler-free version. Um, I liked it. It was a good episode. Uh, some very interesting stuff. Um, very much a kind of uh, Peter Capaldi one-man show, which worked for the simple reason that he is a very good actor, and he has the force of personality, I think is the right way to describe it, to actually carry the entire episode on his own. Um... That's probably all I can really say without starting to delve into spoiler territory, though, if I'm honest. So, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I'm I'm quite positive about the episode. Most of the issues I have with it are fairly minor, but I'll I'll get onto that when I talk spoilers. So, spoilers. Yeah, if you haven't seen the episode yet, be wary. So, the episode begins with uh, the Doctor teleporting into this uh, mysterious castle type thing. Um, after the end of the last one where he got teleported away and immediately you see this sort of hand reach up to a panel and sort of pull a big switch and that's when he teleports in I don't know about anybody else but at that point I immediately called that that was Capaldi's hand and that he was in some sort of time loop type thing um, I get the impression that a lot of people figured out something like that was going on but that's okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Occasionally a reveal like that is okay if you figure it out in advance. Yeah, you know, because on the second he picked up the shovel in the corridor with the dirt on it, and then he found the shovel later, you know, and it was clean. I was like, well, that's the same shovel, isn't it? Yeah, you know, so, so things like that uh, worked well, I thought. And the whole idea of him basically being in this time loop... It's not really a time loop, but it sort of is, if you know what I'm getting, you know where I'm coming from on that. So the idea of him basically being stuck looping endlessly, doing the same thing over and over and over and over again for a couple of billion years, you know, just slowly working his way through this wall, I I really like that idea. That It was actually handled very well. There is one um, slight problem that a few people have uh, mentioned with the episode in that it's stated that everything else in the castle resets so why doesn't the wall of whatever it is you know how come he can work his way through it over time I I can understand why that bugs some people I don't have a massive problem with it but it would have been nice if they'd thrown in some you know, technobabble explanation was just, oh, it's it's at the centre of the thing, so therefore the thing doesn't affect the thing. I, yeah, minor problem. In in the grand scheme of things, that really is a minor issue. Um, I also really, really liked the idea that when the Doctor gets into sort of serious trouble where he's only got seconds to live, he just imagines himself running into the TARDIS and then confidently explaining how he got out of that situation and that's how he figures out how he's going to get out of it. That, that That's a really nice idea, and it does definitely work for him. Especially the idea that he basically kind of spools his brain up to run at about a thousand percent normal speed. Um, and again, it's, it's an interesting idea, and it works. Especially, again, given that Capaldi was effectively carrying this episode himself. I mean, there was what? There was the back of uh, Clara's head, which... I'm willing to bet that wasn't even uh, uh, Gemma Louise Coleman? Yeah. I'm willing to bet that probably wasn't even her. That was probably just one of the extras in a wig. Um, yeah, and I think there was one line of um, audio from her. And then you had the kid right at the end of the episode who didn't get a line. So Capaldi was carrying the entire episode, and that's fine, because he is the kind of actor who can do that. You know, he He's genuinely an excellent actor, and the scripts 
for his run on Doctor Who so far have been very hit and miss. There's been a couple of really quite good ones that play to his strengths, and there's been quite a few that are just kind of not very good. Um, admittedly, that's some sort of most new Who in general, actually. There are some really good ones, and there are some not so good ones. But, um, what would I say? But, as I say, Capaldi as an actor was able to carry the whole episode, and it is genuinely a very good episode. The ending, so, where he finally, after God knows how many loops through, finally breaks through that wall, and he finds himself on Gallifrey, which, let's be honest, I knew that was going to happen, because, partly because... I read a synopsis for uh, the last episode of the season that actually talks about the Time Lords, so I figured that, that was probably what was going to go on. And partially because, let's face it, there's not many people with the kind of technology needed to build that kind of a prison. Well, admittedly, it's Doctor Who, so they can usually just pull something right out of thin air that nobody's ever mentioned before, but uh, either way. Um, so yes, yeah, so he ends up back on Gallifrey, and this whole hybrid thing they've been teasing all along... And he basically you know, says that the hybrid who's going to destroy Gallifrey is me, and puts on his sunglasses. Incidentally, the Sonic sunglasses? No, sorry. Cute one-off, but I'm not a fan of the fact he keeps using the darn things. Um, but regardless, um, there are two comments that are fairly obvious relating to that final line. The first is, oh god, please tell me they're not going to bring in that whole I'm half human thing from uh, Doctor Who the TV movie. Because that line's pretty much been scrubbed from canon. Everybody ignores it. Because, as I mentioned in the last vlog where I talked about Doctor Who, the TV movie basically has four good things going for it, which is Paul McGann, the music, Sylvester McCoy, and the interior of the TARDIS. And everything else about that movie is terrible and should just be ignored. Um... But that was one of my thoughts. The other thought is the fairly obvious bait and switch that when he says the hybrid is me, he's not talking about himself, he's talking about a shielder. Given that she has, you know, now for a little while, for quite some time been calling herself me. Which is actually a very interesting idea for an immortal. And I'll be honest, the character of a shielder I actually really like. I like the idea that she has a you know, hundred life, you know, just many, many lifetimes of memories. But her brain can only store the, unmem- the amount of memories that a normal human brain can. So she forgets stuff over time. Yeah, and that I think is a really, really interesting idea and really interesting take on immortality. So she's obviously coming back. Let's face it, she's in the trailer for next time, and. I'm curious to see where they go with this. So as I say, that's the obvious bait and switch. I don't know if they'll go with that. They could be doing something completely different. We will see. Um, trailer for next time. I'm glad to see the Time Lords retain their uh, epic fashion sense. Because it, then they're not Time Lords if they don't have the stupid giant hats or sort of big collary things. Because Time Lord fashion sense was drawn up in sort of the 80s, so it was ridiculous. Um, but it's that the, the guy who was playing the um, Time Lord in the trailer for some reason he, his face looked incredibly familiar but I only saw the trailer the once so it uh, reminded me a lot of, ter- of um, am I thinking of Terrence Stamper or am I thinking of Malcolm McDowell because I always get those two actors confused I don't actually think it's either of them it's just a guy who reminds me a lot of them but uh, we will see and, yeah, generally, I'm, I'm very curious to see where they go with it. It's the other people who look to be back at the Sisterhood of Khan, and the Sisterhood of Khan are all kinds of weird and fascinating and interesting. And, <clears throat> and we know if you saw the thing they released in the run-up to the 50th anniversary, they actually released a short... Um, five, ten minute thing with uh, Paul McGann as the Doctor and it's basically how he regenerated into John Hurt and he does it on Khan and that's how I know the Sisterhood are back because one of the actresses who was in, who was basically the leader of the Sisterhood there 
is in the trailer and he mentioned the sister or technically I think it was Missy who mentioned the sister of Khan right back at the beginning of this season because he's the one that uh, no because they're the ones that the Doctor gave his confession dial to and they gave it to Missy so there's that so they're interesting because they're all kinds of weird and funky because let's face it Khan's the planet where uh, you have that mad scientist trying to ref- trying to uh, bring a Time Lord dictator back to life a chap called Mobius and you get the impression Mobius was not a pleasant individual he was he was quite a psychopath you know killed a hell of a lot of people you know, and if he ever got control of the Time Lords that would be very very bad but anyway I doubt Mobius is going to feature I only know if they do bring in the sisterhood but they do have all sorts of weird ties to Gallifrey and interesting things so genuinely curious to see where they go from here and yeah basically that, that I think that's I think that's all I've got on this episode it was a very interesting idea it was very well executed the kind of the time loop aspect was it was obvious to me put it that way um, but it was well handled and Capaldi is one of the few doctors who I think could have pulled that episode off so yeah on the whole very happy with it and barreling into the season finale we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what they do and incidentally they'd better not pull another bloody bait and switch with the Time Lords as in we had um, whatever the last David Tennant story was called where you know, they did this whole the Time Lords are returning and we flip a switch and they're gone again you know, and then we had um, the last Matt Smith story where uh, we had the whole the Time Lord, the Gallifrey's returning and it's, it's, you know, and there's a crack in time and then they're still stuck in some parallel universe alternate dimension thing yeah so bring the Time Lords back it's about bloody time we have the Time Lords back and you know let's have the Doctor on the run from them again because those were always very interesting stories to me when I was younger because the Time Lords were kind of this semi-omnipotent force who just they did not approve of what he was doing and as a result he had to be careful of them you know let's face it the end of the war games which is a um, second Doctor story it's the last second Doctor story where he basically he's in a situation where he's there's too many people who need help who've been displaced in time and he can't do it himself so he actually calls up the Time Lords and lets them know that this thing has happened so they can fix it but he knows that he's probably not going to get away and he doesn't and they end up putting him on trial and sending him to exile on Earth and that's actually a it, it the Time Lords there are kind of really good and slightly sinister but you get the impression that they're doing what they believe is right so yeah overall I'm really looking forward to seeing some Time Lords again and I'll be I, I that's that's kind of what I'm hoping. Side note, since we'll almost certainly be getting a new companion, probably in the Christmas special, some things I'd like to see in companions. First, can we please have someone who isn't from you know 20th century Britain? You know, c- can we please have sorry 21st century Britain? I should say. You know, can we please have I don't know an ancient ancient Roman? You know, uh, give us something different. You know, somebody from the future, somebody from the past, somebody who's an alien anything but yet another person from, you know, basically nowish. And for that matter, you know, give us a male companion. Give us uh, give us some companions help give us more than one companion at once. You know, let's face it, the show originally started back in the sixties, he had three. You know, he had Susan, he had Ian, and he had Barbara. And it works as an ensemble piece as well as just a uh, duo show. You know, give us more people more things to play off of and just just give us something different let's face it because all of New Who he's basically had one female companion the only exception was when we had Rory travelling with them as well and that was good because that was new and different and interesting <sighs> so with that teeny tiny rant out of the way I will say thank you very much for watching and um, I'll see you in future videos <laughs>